Hello and welcome to another episode of Choo Choo Zarenka. On this episode we're going to be discussing the discography of Idlewild. So Idlewild were a band from Scotland who obviously take a lot of influence from R.E.M., Teenage Fan Club and The Smiths. This band has a really kind of interesting career trajectory. They started off as a really fast paced, really heavy, clattering punk band. But over the course of their career, much like their primary influences, R.E.M. and Teenage Fan Club, they slowly shifted into a folk rock direction, and then that was later replaced by kind of more of an art rock direction. The band have eight full-length studio albums. We're going to rank them all here. But a quick housekeeping note, I'm not going to be ranking their debut mini-LP, Captain, because, well, I think it's unfair to rank a mini-album up against full-length studio albums. But I will pay lip service to it when we get to the debut album, Hope is Important, so don't worry about that. And as for my own fandom, yeah, I absolutely fucking love Idlewild. They are a stone-cold, iron-clad top five artist for me. They're also the band that I've seen live more than any other band. So it's fair to say I'm a huge, huge Idlewild fan. So without further ado, let's be complete rankers and rank up a storm. These are Idlewild studio albums ranked from worst to best. Coming in last place, dead last, we have Post Electric Blues from 2009, which was Idlewild's sixth album. And yeah, I think this is the only Idlewild record that is kind of mediocre. No, I didn't say bad, I said mediocre. In fact, this record is universally pleasant. There's only one song on this record which I would consider to be bad, and that's the closing track, Take Me Back in Time, which is just kind of this dull acoustic thing. Not very interesting, unfortunately. But the rest of this, yeah, universally pleasant and with plenty of highlights. City Hall just is a really autopilot slice of Idlewild, everything that you could want from an Idlewild song, really awesome stuff. The Night Will Bring You Back to Life, a beautiful acoustic folk song, has really awesome dual vocals from Roddy Womble and guitarist Rod Jones, that's a real standout on this one. Take Me Back to the Island sounds very much like Roddy Womble's solo folk material, it's really melodic and catchy. Circles and Stars has a kind of really rhythmic, odd art rock element to it, that's a really cool one. And yeah, the other tracks on this, as I said, universally pleasant. So, why is this ranked the bottom? Well, it just seems on this record that Idlewild are kind of like out of passion and kind of out of ideas on this record. Um, a lot of this record sounds kind of autopilot, and that autopilot is very pleasant, but it still is autopilot. Songs like Dreams of Nothing, All Over the Town, To Be Forgotten, just sound like standard Idlewild tracks. Like they're kind of like regurgitating their own tunes, just with slightly less energy and slightly less passion. And I think it's very telling that the band took a long hiatus after this record. I think they were just tired, and I think this is a record that they just made because that's their job. They were just making this to make music. And it always kind of sucks when a band does that, and I think this record definitely suffers from that. However, this is not a bad record. It's still pretty damn good, but easy, easy last place within the discography of Idlewild. So coming in next, we have Interview Music from 2019, which at the time of recording is Idlewild's most recent album. And this album is like the polar opposite of the previous entry. The previous entry was like this autopilot album where they were kind of out of ideas and passion. This one is just full of ideas and stuffed full of passion. This is Idlewild going out of their way to make a really cohesive and atmospheric record. This is kind of their like prog psychedelic art rock album the tone and production across this record is pretty uniform and yeah uh, they completely succeeded in making this artistically cohesive record where the whole is better than some of its parts that approach does give rise to the only real significant problem this record has though which is where a few of these tracks kind of just get absorbed into the texture of the record they're not bad songs or anything they just kind of like disappear into the hole especially because as I said like the production across this is pretty uniform these songs all sound kind of the same on a production level but this does have tons of highlights on it as well the opening track dream variations really cool art psychedelia piece really awesome 
you wear it second hand it's just like this grandstanding emotional ballad it's really anthemic and really awesome same things twice takes you back to like early idol world it's got a lot of energy and roddy womble even gives a bit of the old the old growl on it i really like that one forever new is just unbelievably catchy has this really cool stomping chorus and my favorite track off of this is actually the closing track the piano ballad lake martinez roddy womble just on lyrical point with that the melodies are fantastic it's really atmospheric so yeah this record is better than the sum of its parts the whole thing kind of gets elevated there are a couple of tracks, as I said, that just kind of disappear into the background, but everything is universally pleasant, tons of passion, really atmospheric, great stuff from Idleworld here. Next up, we have Make Another World from 2007, which was the band's fifth album. And yeah, this is a really interesting album from a stylistic standpoint, because this represents a real kind of knee-jerk reaction from their previous album, Warnings Promises. So Warnings Promises, their fourth album, the one that came before this, was kind of like a move away from their punkier, heavier material into folk rock. And that really divided the fans. That was a really divisive record. Like a lot of the fans really liked it. A lot of the fans didn't like it at all and wanted the band to remain heavy. And it also caused a bit of a division within the band as to where to go in the future. And they kind of like met it out a compromise where Roddy Wumble would go and do his kind of like solo career, his folk solo career. And he was actually helped by band members to get that off the ground on his first record. And that left Idlewild to go free in a more kind of rocking heavy direction. And yeah, here we have a set of really hard, rocking tracks. It feels like they kind of retconned the Warnings Promises and just took up directly where the remote part, their third album, left off. And yeah, that's not always a good thing when uh, bands kind of like try to appease the fans rather than doing what they want to do from an artistic standpoint. And I guess you could level like the autopilot label at this, much like their weakest record. Uh, post electric blues but i think here it's done with a lot more energy and a lot more passion and yeah just better quality songwriting on this i love pretty much every song on this record there are 10 tracks it's like 35 minutes long no wasted space and i think back in the year of 2007 this is definitely one of my most played records i really really have a personal connection with this one great great record and this has a new aspect for idaho which is the lyrics of roddy womble really blossom on this i think he went away to make his solo record and he learned how to more skillfully like manipulate his words and he's come back with that kind of knowledge and has really applied it to this record so this is kind of like a really hard punky almost metal-esque record with beautiful folk lyrics across it yeah wonderful wonderful stuff and plenty of fantastic highlights on this as i said i love every track Major highlights include the incredibly heavy Everything As It Moved just immediately in there with that really hard stomping sound. No emotion, it's just a straight up pop song. The title track, Make Another World, I really love that. It's underpinned by this really simple bass line that just makes it really rhythmic and Roddy's Wombles lyrics on that are just absolutely perfect. So I slick my hair and I stamp my feet until the darkness, until the darkness is complete. Ah, just my chef's kiss for his lyrics on that. Future Works, really emotional, great trumpet work on that. You and I are both away, just incredibly catchy, just sounds like the Smiths. A Ghost in the Arcade is just like a stomping, catchy single cut. Really, really awesome. Once in your life, definitely taking more than a, a few cues from Teenage Fan Club's Mount Everest. And the closing track finished it. Remains, just a really cathartic way to finish the record. Yeah, love this one. Fantastic record by Idleworld. <laughs> Next up, we have Hope is Important from 1998, which was the band's debut album. Well, almost debut album, because before their debut album, they had the debut mini LP Captain, which was also released in 1998. And Captain, yeah, it's 21 minutes long, six tracks, and it's just a set of really fast-paced, chaotic, bruisingly heavy punk songs. Enemy famously described their sound at this time as a flight of stairs falling down a flight of stairs, and I think that's totally apt for this particular period of Idlewild. Tracks like Self Healer and Last Night I Missed All the Fireworks are just so, as I said, so chaotic and youthful and energetic. 
and hope is important basically just takes that template and just spreads it over a full length record maybe it's a little bit more refined and slightly less chaotic but pretty much the same type of thing and yeah i absolutely love this record i love every track off of it and this is really truly nostalgic for me like when i was 17 years old i used to pogo all around my bedroom and dash it up as roddy wumble would have it known and yeah, just tons and tons of great tracks off of this. You have the wiry, nervous, a film for the future, the kind of anthemic sing-along nature of When I Argue I See Shapes and I'm a Message, the distorted Django classic, Everyone Says You're So Fragile, and the epic closing track, Low Light, just really, really awesome stuff. We also have a couple softer tracks on here. I'm Happy To Be Here Tonight is kind of points the way forward for what Idlewild would become, as well as Safe and Sound. So yeah, this is just a, pretty much a flawless debut album by Idlewild. Absolutely fantastic stuff if you just want to mosh and get all hot and sweaty. Next up, we have The Remote Part from 2002, which was the band's third album, and yet this represents the commercial peak of Idlewild. This album has their only top 10 single on it, which was You Held the World in Your Arms, and also this record charted in at number 3 on the UK Albums Chart, so this was a huge hit for the band. And yeah, sonically speaking, this album is comprised of three kind of like juxtaposed elements. The first one being that this record is insanely heavy this is easily Idlewild's heaviest record hands down no question the guitars on this are just so well produced and so goddamn heavy they're bone crunching they're absolutely savage at times and often the record just borders on straight metal but that's juxtaposed by the second element which was the songwriting as these songs are just designed to be the catchiest songs basically ever written these are all sing-along anthems they're designed to be played in a stadium and have lots of crowd participation they're full of immediate insistent vocal hooks and the third element juxtaposes that because these songs have like a cold almost isolated static feel to them like yeah they just feel like they've been hooked in and pulled kicking and screaming from the highlands there's a kind of like an isolated, lonely, kind of depressing feel to these songs and Idlewild just feel like they've never been as far away from you as they do on this particular record so yeah, it's an interesting combination of these elements and the record is, yeah, it's 38 minutes long, 11 tracks, it absolutely screams by and there are tons of highlights on this, of course the opening track, You Held the World in Your Arms the big hit single, just immediately catchy you have the savage, like, brutal, punishing heaviness of a modern way of letting go. Like, really awesome. I love that song. You have the cascading melodies of American English, another big hit for the band. Live in a Hiding Place just kind of, like, demonstrates where the band were going to go after this. Like, nice and folky, R.E.M. style. Tell Me Ten Words is just this huge mega ballad. Sounds kind of like the Smiths. And Stay the Same is just really chaotic and mosh-inducing. And the closing track in remote part, lovely build up with a nice piano before it just fuzzes itself out in an epic conclusion. So yeah, plenty of good stuff on this. The reason this doesn't go higher on the list though is that I do think there are a couple cracks on this. Certain songs, namely I Am What I Am Not and Outer Routine, sound like Idlewild are kind of running out of ideas. I mean, they have been working in the same genre for quite some time now. However, those tracks are saved just by the punishing heaviness, like just the, the, the sheer straight fire brutal nature of these songs kind of papers over the cracks. So yeah, I absolutely love this record. Um, I have done since the moment it was released. It's the band's commercial peak and therefore, you know, probably should be one of the first records you get to. So another awesome album by Idlewild. So coming in third place and taking home the Idlewild bronze medal, we have Everything Ever Written from 2015. So this is a late period album. It comes just after their long hiatus. Six years of a hiatus, actually. And yeah, this was a very pleasant surprise when it was released because, to be honest, I didn't think Idlewild were going to come back from that hiatus. I thought they were pretty much done. But no, they are back. And yet, yeah, thank God they did because this is a great record. The difference between this album and the album directly before the hiatus, uh, the lowest ranked one, Post Electric Blues, it's just night and day. On that record, they were just 
out of passion and just kind of running on empty. This record, on the other hand, is just full of passion and they've obviously been, the tank has been topped up and yet they're really going for it here. This record is obviously coming from a place of love. No longer are they making music just because of the daily grind, they're making it because they want to make it, they want to make an artistic marvel, and yeah. There are three things that kind of set this record out from uh, the other Idlewild records. Firstly, this is the first one where they're actually paying attention to the whole uh, over the individual pieces. This record has lots of kind of like atmospheric fills in between the songs and a lot more atmospheric texture. There's obviously been a lot more attention uh, given over to the general cohesive nature to the record and the general flow of the record's narrative. Obviously, they would take it to extremes on the next record, Interview Music, but they get the ball rolling nicely here. Second aspect is the lyrics on this are just absolutely superb. I think this is where Roddy Womble just really hits his kind of lyrical zenith like this record's just full of love for the really small details of life yet yeah, fantastic lyrical performance i absolutely love it like lyrics on tracks like nothing i can do about it and use it if you can use it just yeah mwah, chef's kiss those songs lyrics are just masterful in my opinion uh, another aspect of this record that's really cool is that this seems to be an overview of the band in general this record seems to be pulling tracks from different eras of their music so plenty of different styles on this for example you have on another planet which sounds really kind of like basic and punky and energetic much like Idlewild's earlier stuff radium girl super slick super catchy could have been on something like the remote part the opening track collect yourself really heavy sounds like it could have easily been on make another world use it if you can use it sounds like a much better version of the title track post electric blues that's really awesome one of my favorite uh idle world songs nothing i can do about it just sounds like it could have been on morning's promises so that yeah it really runs the gambit and this works as a great kind of like celebration of everything that is idle world and i love this record not a bad song on it flows really well and just an awesome awesome return to form for the band Silver medal time, and the silver medal is going to go to Warnings Promises from 2005, which was the band's fourth album. And yeah, the band's previous album, The Remote Part, their third one, had blown up huge and become a huge smash hit. And they had the backing of the record company while making this record. But Idlewild kind of understood their place in the history of rock. They understood that they were kind of a niche cult band and that they had gotten lucky with the trends and probably they weren't going to be able to maintain that success when the, the tide of fashion changed. So instead of focusing to make their next record, they just decided to party hard while the getting was good and went off to California for three years, soaked up the atmosphere, did the whole Cali thing and basically got a bunch of experience on their bones. And yeah, as a side note, also recorded this, their fourth album. And ultimately, time kind of proved them right, because when they did come back with this record, the tide of fashion had indeed changed, and this record was nowhere near as successful as their previous one, and actually led to a parting of the ways between them and the record company. This record was also an incredibly divisive record, because this is the one where Idlewild took a sharp left turn and went in the direction of folk rock, leaving behind their kind of metal, punky era. And lots of fans just really didn't agree with that change, they didn't like it, and I can totally identify with that because, personally, I didn't like it either when it was first released. You know, Idlewild were like my heavy band, the only heavy band that I truly deeply loved. And they came back with this, you know, this just beautiful, emotionally resonant shit. I mean, what the fuck? Like, where, where's my mosh inducers? But wouldn't you know, the things that I didn't like about this record upon its initial release actually turned out to be its best aspects. And yeah, they are just tons of good tracks on this uh this is just 12 pretty much perfect songs start to finish great roster of tracks highlights as i say this whole record is just comprised of highlights but yeah highlights include the the kind of rocking power chords of the opening track love steals from loneliness a kind of metallic freak out of i want a warning the none more rem-ish ballad i understand it the absolutely brilliant monolithically awesome too long awake just this my Bloody Valentine, Shoegaze Masterpiece, it's my favourite Idlewild song, straight up one of my favourite songs ever recorded, I absolutely love that song, I sing it pretty much every time I take a shower, <laughs> fantastic stuff, El Capitan, 
brilliant brilliant catchy single love those ghostly pianos and that absolutely stomping catchy chorus just wonderful wonderful stuff disconnected has a cool kind of like old country vibe to it and not just sometimes but always and good night has that emotional resonance that i was talking about like especially good night with its like really hard cathartic fuzz out like really really awesome stuff so yeah i think this record is a masterpiece I can understand how people were frustrated with it at the time, but looking back in retrospect, I wouldn't change a damn thing about this record. So here we are at the top of the mountain and the gold medal for Idleworld is going to go to 100 Broken Windows from the year of 2000 and it was the band's second album. And yeah, I absolutely fucking love this record. This is one of the most important records of my youth. It's so meaningful for me. This is like a gateway record that led into heavier music. From this, I kind of went into metal and got into all that kind of nice heavy shit. So massive thanks to Idleworld for making this masterpiece because without the kind of Smithian REM-ish elements of this, the kind of softer side to this, I don't think I would have gotten into heavy music uh, so soon. So yeah, this record, as I said, is an absolute masterpiece. This has 12 tracks on it. Every single one of them is masterful. There's not a second of dead air on this. And on this record, they're taking on a good step forward from the debut album. They still have that kind of youthful energy but the chaos has been reined in and these songs have a much kind of wider palette to them they kind of take more time and they breathe and they feel kind of like spacious and clean and there's this very kind of like wintry scottish sparse feeling on this record you know like the, these songs have just been dragged in from the cold and they're really sad and wet and just want to stand in the corner and cry a little bit like i love the way the sadness kind of rolls in off these songs and the kind of like that feeling of being slightly awkward and slightly outside of the main thrust of society there's a very kind of like morrissey-esque aspect to this record and i really appreciate that and yeah where to begin with this one so many highlights like i said 12 tracks all of them awesome the opening little discouraged just an absolutely fantastic way to open the record i remember i went to uh, an idol world concert and that was like the first song they played and i remember like the first 12 rolls or something fell over and it was everybody was like rolling on the floor and i had managed to keep my feet and there was this beautiful japanese girl like lying on the floor next to me and i helped her up and like kind of protected her throughout the gig and then you know we started dating so fantastic memory for me <laughs> but yeah little discouraged really awesome rocking song i don't have the map love roddy scream on that these wooden ideals definitely steps into more pop territory i always feel there's an element of echo and the bunny men about that song really love that one Rose Ability sees Roddy Womble screaming the lyrics, Gertrude Stein says that's enough. I mean, who else could get away with that lyric but Idleworld? Absolutely fantastic stuff. Chef's Kiss. Talking about awesome rocking tracks, Idea Track, really fantastic, like a kind of more experimental. Love the weird violins on that. Really, really cool. Let Me Sleep Next to the Mirror. Beautiful kind of harmonic chiming riffs on that listen to what you've got super heavy it just makes me want to mosh around my my bedroom actually it's darkness you know that chorus share a shade a shyness it's just absolutely fantastic mistake pageant unbelievably catchy quiet crown probably my favorite off this record steps off the gas and really kind of lets the emotions flow talking about emotions the bronze medal the closing track just a really kind of forlorn like dour way to close the record again that wintry sad feeling really really awesome so yeah this record is a five star masterpiece without question and a straight first ballot choice to be in my top 20 records of all time so that's my order world list but that might not be your list please sound off in the comment section and tell me how you'd rank these records like share subscribe and all that kind of youtube jazz take care of yourself but most of all just keep on ranking
Because I know they won't see you what you've done. 